encourage you. That was right what you needed. And you guys are members. You should, definitely should be sharing and subscribing. Amen. And guess what? Um, secondly, we've already been over that in the announcements. Guess what? But give, give to the give to the ministry. Guess what? It goes to the, the uh, uh, facilities, the media ministry, the revivals, outreach. Amen. So it doesn't go in our pockets. We use it for other things. Amen. And so and so we're excited about that. Amen. And guess what? Now before we get started, you already know. Now have your pen, have your have your what? Have your Bible, have your pen, have your highlighter, have your notepad so you can take notes. Amen. Because God expects us to be students of the word. Amen. So let's go ahead. <laughs> Come on now. Let's go ahead and pray and get into the word. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. We thank you for the opportunity to, to um, meet with you and to break bread with you, Lord, as a family, Lord. Father God, as we go over this series of meekness, Lord God, Father God, let it saturate our spirits, Lord God, that all of, all of you and none of me, in Jesus' name, Father. We open ourselves for your word. We bind the spirit of distraction right now. Lord God, let us be alert. Let us be attentive, Lord God, and receptive in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, man. Y'all good to see y'all. My brother, come on, man. It's good to see y'all. So guess what? We're on part five of a series, the Fruit of the Spirit series called Meekness, right? We've been on meekness. You know, we talk about meekness is not weakness. It's trusting God. The series is called Trusting God to Fight Your Battles. Amen. And some of us, and guess what? When we're going successful people, guess what? You're going to have people going to try to bait you in. And the biggest trick the devil, the devil has to try to get you to handle it yourself. Amen. You know, the toughest thing in the world is not to talk. We always look at that on television and our music and our culture. We think the toughest people are the ones that stick the gun in somebody's face. Right? But I'm not sure. Like I said, y'all know, some of y'all are a bit young. Y'all see that thing in Friday when he was teaching, when the dad was teaching Craig how to fight. He said, he, he said you know what? He said, men want to use a gun now because they're scared to take, to, 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 fit, to, to get hit. Right? And they said, you in life, you win some and you lose some. Amen. And guess what? The devil wants you to be afraid of the outcome. So guess what? He wants you to do what you he wants you to handle it yourself in your flesh and take a shortcut. I'm going to tell my boy, I'm not going to wait for prayer. I'm not going to wait for God to move the manager out the way, a touch, a touch, a, 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 a unscrupulous manager out the way. I'm going to do it myself. I'm not going to wait for God to heal my marriage. I'm going to go and get me some young, some, you know, huh? Men and women doing it now, you know? Because I don't, I'm not appreciated the house. I don't get respect, so I'm gonna go and creep. You know, get me a side chick. You know, and get a side disease. You know, <laughs> get a, you know, get a side shot. Get a side, huh? Hmm. And then when she walking out on you, you gonna want to sing Teddy Pendergrass and crying and James Brown and baby, please don't go. No, you know, right? Huh? And then when your wife Euro step you behind, you know. That's a basketball term, you know. <laughs> I think it's still walking, but still, traveling, but still. You know, then you want to get to tripping, right? Because of that. And so what happens is we don't want to, meekness tells us I'm going to put it in God's hand, right? We trust God. And so because of that, in the world's term, it's going to be seen as weak and as passive. You're not sticking up for yourself, but like I told you, one of the biggest traps the devil has is to get you to handle it yourself. And guess what? Fall right into it. Look at your neighbor and say, let God have your back. Guys, you got to let God fight your battles, especially in this season. Guess what now? But there, and you know what? And I was thinking about this as I was doing, I was praying about this. The Lord had, had uh, put on my, uh, about the civil rights movement and how Dr. King looked weak doing that. Marching and letting dogs hit them and the water holes hit them. But he was letting God fight the battle. And what happened is, is that they look so bad on camera doing it. Now I got their grandkids on. Now I ain't, you know. Every time you show them a picture about it, they're like, man, I, you know. <laughs> that idiot was strong term surgery today, tomorrow, forever. He's just stupid, right? And guess what? Before he died, he was an everlasting day. He ended up with a black child. <laughs> Hypocritical, right? But guess what? Guess what? When you're quiet, I remember uh, President Obama said this. He said, what you do with, with, with ignorant people is you let them talk, and then they hang themselves. God don't need your help until he, he'll give you instruction, but he doesn't need your help. He don't need your help. 
And so what we want to do is run ahead of God because we think we have all the answers. Why is God having you be meek? Because God wants to fix it for good. He knows the whole thing. But that song says, I know who holds my future and I know who holds my hand. And so meek people understand I trust God. I don't have to fight anymore. I don't have to scream. I don't have to go out my nature. I don't have to do this stuff. I can wait. I can wait. I don't have to go outside of my marriage and do something. I don't have to go out and, 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 and in the street and hit somebody. I don't have to go and lecture my child every time. I trust God. I can be meek. Amen. Amen. So we got to understand that meet people here from the Holy Spirit, meet people or let the Bible says those who are uh, um, are the sons of God or uh, uh, um, obey the spirit of God or the sons of God. They follow the spirit. What does that mean? They follow the prompting of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is telling them when to speak and when not to speak. Amen. The devil wants to trap you in your own words because he can't get you no other way. He can't get you. We went to war. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego last week. The week before that, we went over Daniel in the lion's den. Neither one of them tried to defend themselves. Joseph was put into that. And the week before that, we went over Joseph being put in the hole. He went and got thrown in the well. Hmm? And when he saw his brothers again, he didn't try to get revenge. Guess what? His success was his revenge. <laughs> huh? I told you about me and, and how they walked out and how I lost everything. And boy, they went on television saying all kinds of stuff. Huh? Why don't you say something? Why don't you sue? No, that's, I didn't have to. Didn't have to say a word. God did it. The success did it. The resurgence did it. The comeback did it. Stronger than before did it. Amen. So guess what? This one is called Trusting God, a meekness part five, trusting God to fight your battles. And guess what? And that series is going to be called Great Expectations. What does it mean? God expects something from you. Your expectations are great. This one is not about your benefits of meekness. God expects you to be meek. God expects us to be people as Christians to be to be not passive, but meek and humble among people treating us wrong. He expects it, and that's, ooh, that's hard on the flesh. Because guess what? We talk, especially in America, that when somebody knock you down, you get back up and hit them harder. You, do, you know? Hmm? Our apostles aren't Jesus. I, 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 our leaders aren't Jesus and the apostle Paul. they George Washington and Ronald Reagan. You hit somebody, they punch you, you better make sure they feel it next time. No. Jesus tells us what? Turn the other what? We don't want to hear that. Why? Because our flesh don't want to die. <laughs> I'm looking at a brother right now from Chicago. <laughs> He's trying to swallow this stuff. <laughs> you can go to Chicago. You get ran. I know you can get killed doing that. I guess you now. You have some balance, right? Because Peter had a sword too, though. You know. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Don't return evil for evil. When you're defending yourself, somebody's physically attacking you. Don't be crazy, you know, right? Don't keep giving people money and they robbing you. You know that. But God is talking about people that you know are doing evil and you know how to bounce. Turn the other cheek. What does it mean? Forgive them. Don't mean you need to stay in their face, but you need to forgive them. Amen. God expects this from us. Amen. Let's go to the word of God. Amen. Thank you, Father. I feel the power of God already. So we're going to go to Isaiah 53, verse 7. And guess what? We, we'll turn there, but if we don't turn there now, we're going to get it, we're going to get it later. <laughs> Wednesday coming, y'all. Wednesday's coming. Amen. And it won't be a ton. This is the main scripture we're going to focus on today. And we're going to land here. Amen. That's right. <laughs> Siri telling on Kevin. That's right. I am, hallelujah. Isaiah 53. Yeah, you can go ahead and turn. It's one scripture today. God expect this from us. Why? Why does God, hallelujah, why does God expect us to be meek? Because we talk about people are watching you. Your testimony, the testimony of Jesus Christ is on the line. People are watching how you handle it because they know the world gets people back. 
The world fights in the street. The world, you know, I ain't talking about no self-defense, but you know what I mean. The world, if somebody roll their eyes, I'm going to roll my eyes more. If somebody disrespect me at work, I'm going to go and do, I'm gonna, and next time I get a chance to, when I become manager, I'm going to tell people off too. Amen. It, I think the Holy Spirit said it's a test for power. He's grooming you for power. You've been praying for power and influence. And guess what now? God, you got the talent for it, but you need to have the character for it. So when you get there, you're not a mean boss. You're not vindictive. There's certain testimonies I can't say right now because it's half done. I got to wait till it's manifested, but it's powerful what God did with me about forgiveness. Let's go to Isaiah 53, verse 7. Isaiah 53, verse 7. I know you got it. I know you got it because y'all obedient. I know, you know, it says here, he was oppressed. This is Jesus now. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he what? Opened not his what? No. Mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. This is Jesus now. And as a sheep before shearers is dumb, not stupid, but quiet. So he opened not his what? Mouth. Jesus, God in the flesh, had a chance when he was being crucified to wipe everybody out. I wiped the entire Roman Empire out. <laughs> The Bible says that one angel killed 180,000 people in one day. One. And he could have called legions, he said, and didn't do it. Meek people have the power to do things, but they restrain themselves. I think I told you before I was in the prison and boy, and I was I was a, a, a minister at the prison. I give them like a grocery budget. I was at the faith and character dorm. And what I would do, man, I thought they were in there. They, they were in prison. They were talking. They were talking in tongues. I was like, man, these people are really saved. I believed it. Right. Man, I spent like about seven hundred dollar a month budget on giving them groceries and commissaries. How about one day, man, I walked in there, man, they had a store. They had barcodes on the food uh, that I had given them, all that stuff selling. it. They had a grocery, they had an item, they had a list and all that stuff. I said, what y'all doing? You know you cut off. <laughs> right? And the problem is the more I gave, the more they thought I was a sucker. But I had to tell them, I said, you know what? I know what you're doing, but I'm here for your benefit. And if I, if I, if I expose it, I know my time here is limited, limited and it's going to hurt you. So I'm quiet, not because you're smart or your criminal stuff is working. I am disappointed. But, because, but I know that if I confront you about it, then this relationship is going to be over and it's going to hurt you. Jesus was quiet, not because he was weak. He knew if he had opened his mouth, it would hurt you. You wouldn't have salvation. The devil would have caught what he was doing. Amen. He wanted to die so he could resurrect and go as an innocent man, be, be, be uh, tried and found guilty by the devil so you could go free. Why, Pastor Lucas? Because Adam was guilty. And guess what? Because Adam was guilty, it doomed every person that came out of his loins. So if Jesus is in, tried guilty but really innocent, guess what? It's going to free everybody that comes out of his spiritual loins. It's a spiritual law that was set up during the Adamic period. And so guess what now? Who is it? Sometimes God will have you be meek, not for yourself, but for other people. To keep your marriage together, you might have to keep your mouth shut. First, they look at that, right? <laughs> I love you, baby. I'm working on it. Lord Jesus. <laughs> I don't want to lose no happiness now. <laughs> huh? huh? As long as you keep filling with turkey wings, I'm, hey. Me and KC was back there watching them car. Huh? Scooping that rice up. I like, you okay, Chuck? Oh, yeah, I'm happy. You know? huh? <laughs> I made runs to the store even when I was tired, about two or three, didn't I? I was like, sure, sure, I'll go. <laughs> huh? Yeah, amen. To keep your kids on track, sometimes you can't ask, you can't address everything. To keep friends, sometimes you can't bring up every little thing. If you're going to be brothers, 
Hmm? Brother Kevin, I understand. I know that every time that I see you, that you, you just wear this, but I like this color, man. You like Clemson, but I'm UNC. I don't know why you, <laughs> we need to deal about that. <laughs> Little petty stuff. You like, you like hot coffee. I like iced coffee. Stupid. You know what I'm saying? And you keep bringing up stupid stuff that wasn't even an issue before, but you just keep drawing petty stuff. Huh? I like my bread with the ends on it, but you don't. I see that you, well, you don't understand that you should cut your, your, your sandwich diagonal. I know you cut it in half, you know. We need to just shut up. Everybody <laughs> looking at me like, Amy. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Woo, it's hot. My feet are hot. <laughs> Amen. And let God do it. We get in the way, we get impatient, we get the one, I want to fix it now, we can't, I got to fix him now, I got to set this up now, and guess what now, Jesus opened not his mouth, why? Because he had a bigger purpose. And guess what, thank you, Holy Spirit's telling me, guess what, God don't say everything he's on his mind to you, because you couldn't handle it. I know this fool ain't going to do this again. He done told him twice over here. I told her about rolling her eyes, you know, but I still love her. I can't tell her. Now, go ahead and bless her. Tell her I love because she can't handle that today, you know. <laughs> I know they're going to roll their eyes next week. I know they're stingy. I know that uh, 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 Luke is going to feel sorry for him. So I done told him he's fearfully wonderful. Man. Oh, God, here we go again. Pity part. You know, <laughs> imagine if God did that to us. Man. We can handle it. Like, oh, God, God hates me. Every, every, you know, we, oh, every, he always on me. I can't, I can't do nothing right. You know how we get, right? So meek people understand, especially wives. Sometimes, especially when you're dealing with, with black men who have been crushed by the world. I'm, I'm glad I love my wife because she's, she's meek but not weak. So she don't say everything on her mind. You can tell she thinks so. She just get to sing in my name. Chuck, I already know. <laughs> That's all, you know, sometimes why, sometimes we don't need to hear everything on your mind. Sometimes it's good to just marinate and then let your few words be, have power to it. Amen. 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 Husbands and fathers, sometimes you don't say everything to your kids. Clean up this, do this, do, you didn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Amen, thank you, sir. Why you got the crayon on the Billy Bob? Why you got the crayon on the thing? Just help Billy Bob out. You know? He trying. Right? He shared his toy yesterday. I mean, today, when yesterday, he took it back. So you got to do it, right? You got to be, guess what? So God didn't meet people understand. Meet people are leaders. So guess what they understand now? Hey, I understand. If I say this, it's going to break their spirit. Right now, I got to focus on this. Yeah, I got to focus. Yeah, they there, but I got to consider where they are. Yeah. As a pastor, I could consider some of you guys just heard about the Holy Spirit two years ago, so I can't go in. Y'all need to be saying, y'all need to be speaking this. I can't do that. I got to bring you in slow. Well, and we got this. Why is the church like this? Why we, why we uh, don't have a bunch of praise and worship? Because we got about, what, an hour, and guess what? Now you need more words. Some of you didn't know what Genesis was when you started. So I got to kind of... <laughs> Huh? Huh? I can't fuss about giving every week, even though I'm thinking about it. You know, I can't. Y'all will leave. Y'all be like, hey, uh, he too much about. Yeah, I can't because I'll lose you. And the main thing is eternal life. Jesus could have talked about a whole lot of stuff on that cross, but he focused on the main. Look at your neighbor and say, keep the main thing. Keep the, main the, main thing. Main thing. the main thing. Sometimes uh, the Bible says all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. So guess what now? Sometimes you got to fo stop focusing on the little, the little stuff and focus on the big issue. And sometimes you're so busy focusing on the small stuff, so you're losing the whole thing. You so focus on, on, on all this other stuff. Uh, they didn't look like this, and they didn't do this, and they didn't dress like this, and Carlton don't, and Carlton never home. Carl, you ain't forgot Carlton working. The lights is on. You walk around all day on social media talking about what you lost out on, and then you mad at Carlton coming back. Why you, why your clothes dry? I've been out there building a the highway, fool. What you know? Huh? Turn the lights on. Turn them off. Turn them off. Huh? When you want to complain, turn the lights on and off. Amen. 
So we focus on that small, and sometimes, yes, it's critical, but guess what the devil do? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Guess what he'll do, First Lady? What he'll do is he'll, the devil get you so focused on that small stuff that it become bigger than the blessing. Hmm? Mama, you bugged me. And he, for, he, 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 forget, he forget you to forget that your mama alive and all other people's mama lost theirs. They don't, they don't have a mama. My mama always bugging me. My dad always saying this to me. And, then, and you forget you got one that you can call. Amen. Class on picking socks up. He always working. He always doing this. I ain't giving him no key. He can Kool-Aid. I work too. I can do this too. And you forgot. And you guess what you forgot? The big thing is God gave you somebody that loves you for you and your crazy self. Amen. Huh? Huh? Don't let it get twisted. Pastor, get, you know, hey, you know, hey, hey, we got to think, yes, the first thing is a high value man. But hey, look, 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 look. God said, don't get the tripping, huh? It ain't replaceable now, huh? I ain't going to like devil. You ain't going to, the devil is a liar. I go in, and, 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 then, and then and then first they be like, hey, Chuck, why are you in here kissing on me? Like, I love it. You you just look at me in my, because I just had a conversation with the devil. Tried to, I said, oh, the devil, uh-uh, you ain't, you ain't sucking me. <laughs> huh? Nope. Yep. She like I I just I just walk in there shit just randomly. Hey, how are you? I just I well, you know, huh? No, I ain't no sucker. I ain't stupid. You know what I'm saying? And though that's what he do, right? He check that meat and stuff, and then he get you thinking you missing out on something. I could do better than this job right here. I'm, I'm gonna tell them off right now. You know, hey, I'm Ricky. You don't, be, you don't talk to Ricky that way. I come in when I want. If I want to come in, it's 8.30. I'm going to come in. I'm in the parking lot at 8.30. If I come in, I'm in the parking lot at 8.30. I ain't got to sit at my job. I've been at this job for 25 years. You don't tell me what to do. You don't tell Ricky what to do. <laughs> Start talking to third person. I think this third person, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And end up, they walk you to the parking lot for the last time. You're like, what happened? I thought I was Ricky. Pretty Ricky, replaceable Ricky, big stick Ricky, running around. You yeah? know? Right? You're not meek and then say, okay, I'm going to show you then. Everybody replaceable. Amen. Jesus opened not his mouth because there was something bigger. How many times have he re- have re- risked the main thing for the small thing? How many times are we going to keep doing? And then guess what? We have a culture now. We unsatisfied about it. We entitled. We unsatisfied about everything. I saw something on LinkedIn where, guess what? I think Kevin sent it to me or something. But I saw something on LinkedIn but where, where there was this parent fussing at the child like this. And they said, today, he said, this, and the child was looking. And the parent just been down there fussing at the child at this point. And, and, the, and the person said, that this is abuse right here, Right? For now, this is modern abuse, right? And then they showed a picture of Rocky after a fight with black eyes and say, this is how I used to look when I talked back to mama. Right? <laughs> right? And so now this culture thinks, okay, now if you disagree with me, that's abuse. And not realizing you got somebody love you enough to correct you. And so guess what? Thank you, Lord. And guess what now? So meek people understand the big picture. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, Husband. Thank you, Wife. Lord, thank you that you love me enough to correct me. Thank you, Lord, that you are in, you put me in a church where the past ain't scared of me. For he's, that, that, uh, uh, that you have people to pray for my soul every day. Praying for my betterment every day. Amen. So we need to understand what meekness is and the power of silence sometimes to let God do. The Bible says, what, be still and know. Don't you know that's a form of worship when you're quiet, when God, that's an honor for God. Just like when somebody's speaking and making a speech, you're quiet. That's honor. That's not disrespect, Right. You see somebody up there and they're a presidential speech or something, a, a dignitary, and they're speaking or, or even a funeral or something like that, some kind of, some, a, a, some kind of ser- ceremony to honor somebody, and you're sitting there quietly sitting. That's not, that's not disrespectful. You're honoring. Amen. 
And when you're doing that with me, it's you're honoring God. And God, you're telling God, God, I'm putting you first. Amen. Amen. He opened out his mouth. He opened. So this week, try that. Try it. And say, God, I trust you. And guess what? You know how you're going to do it? You know it's going to make it easy? When you're quiet, say under your breath, God, I trust you. Don't you think I work in corporate America? Don't you think they play games? I'm a black man, highly educated and, 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 one, and, and, and successful in certain things. Man, please. They looking for that stuff because they look at me like I'm not supposed to be there. There's supposed to be Asians and white people there. So they go have conversations when I'm not there off work together and I'm not invited to it. How can you tell? Because they say the same stuff. They don't cooperate with you. And then, you know, they, they correct you in front of them. Pastor Lucas get that. Yeah, and I get quiet. Because guess what? I know it's the spirit and I'm going to win. Ain't nothing they can do. I'm showing you that. That's why I'm quiet, because guess when I write these books, when I go, when, when, when we get more public, guess what? I'm going to show you. I, I'm not saying I, God's going to show you what it is not to fear the devil. Have no fear. Have no fear of that stuff. Meek people have no fear. When people are walking outside the will of God and doing demonic stuff and you're a Christian, have no fear of that stuff. You ain't got to say you can sit back like this. I told you before when, when I was losing everything and, and, the, and the family I had was walking out the door on TV making lying videos, all kind of stuff, pompous, all kind of stuff like that. Guess what? People came, drove from another state to see uh, the Charles Lucas, that bragging, arrogant, something, whatever. The guy that blessed you and gave out of his substance for you called you when you didn't call him when things were burning down. They came to see my state to celebrate it. And I took him out to dinner. I, I'm pretty, I think I paid for it. But guess what? I sat back in that chair like this. I think I told you with my hand back like this. Smile with a smug look smiling on my face. And they were shocked. They wanted me to be crying. They said, say, what's going on with you? I said, I'm supremely confident in God. Amen. Supremely. I said, you came here to see that man, please. Yeah. <laughs> I know what God's going to do. Right. Amen. And so you have no fear of them. And you're going to get shown that. That's why David beat Goliath in public. It was, that's why it was a public defeat. Why? So that everybody there could have no fear. And the Bible even says, we'll, we'll get into David and Goliath uh, uh, soon, because I, I want to go through this Bible with a fine tooth comb so you can have, be familiar with the context and the people of the Bible. But we talk about how David beat Goliath with the rocks, but we forget to tell you as pastors that after they did that, the entire nation of Israel went and ran into that valley and started fighting after that. After they saw Goliath get beat, that emboldened them. And when you see the, the fear, the stuff that you have been, corporate giants or whatever, get beat in your face by someone else, it will embolden you. I'm telling you now, I have no fear. I have no fear of them. None whatsoever. Because I'm, I'm fully conscious that they cannot stop what God does. None of that. You don't even have to lose sleep over that stuff. Amen? Right. Meet people don't lose sleep over it. It don't mean that you go to work disrespectful. But you do your job. But when they get to huffing, but you don't have to do all that. Because God, God put you there. Amen? 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 You get that? Confident. You need to have a steel confidence. Confident people, and I think I told you before that, the, oh, I, I'm, a, I'm a boxing fan. And guess what now? Mike Tyson was different. He was scary quiet, right? <laughs> he was so confident. I Like I said before, you could tell when he fought Lance Lewis and he bit Lewis, Lance Lewis, I knew Mike Tyson was going to lose. Why? Because Mike Tyson don't talk. He's too, when he's confident, all he do is sit there and stare you down like this. He don't even move his head. His eyes just go. You're like, oh, man, this ain't going to last too. He's going to destroy somebody. If Mike Tyson's quiet, he walk in that ring just like this, or you got a problem. You want him to talk to you. <laughs> say something, please. <laughs> huh? Or you, like your Africans say, you can go see your ancestors right now. <laughs> huh? Then Wakanda people, you're going to go visit the ancestors. <laughs> huh? That's what's about to happen, right? Confident people are quiet. They have a steel confidence in them. Amen. Take away one. God's calling your life requires, and I should have said meekness. My apologies if I get it. 
God's calling your life requires meekness. Why? Because you can't fight this by yourself. God is bringing you to a place that they're bigger than you. They're stronger than you. They're more organized. I'm outnumbered. Mm-hmm. Out of probably 30 people on my team, I'm the only African-American. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Loyalty. <laughs> Charles, I noticed it just happened. I noticed you. And they like, they like the... Uh, we're in, he, you know, the guy's like, well, where'd you, where'd you go? How many more, some messages you got? They want to know all the information so they can make a weapon. Yeah. It don't matter. <laughs> I laugh at the devil. Yeah. Why? He has no pot zero. And the more I win, the more I get challenged, and the more I win, the bolder I get. Numbers chapter 12, verse 3. And, and, and guess what? Well, man, we, we've been through the numbers before, haven't we? We've been through that battle. Mama started the 13 when, the, when, she, when God sent the children of Israel out there to go scope the land. He said, yeah, they might of you. Yeah, they're stronger than you. But guess what? I got God. You got God. And they looked at the giants instead of God, ended up coming back with a bad report, and God was offended. Pretty much like you, if you have a child and your child is in the second grade and they come home and the bullies are bigger than them and they're like, and, and you said, I got you, I got you, but they're still looking at the bullies. The bully like this, your child might be like this, but you, they don't look at you who's like this. Like, man, you don't trust me. You know? Hey, Amen. Numbers chapter 12, verse 3 here. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men upon the face of the earth. Moses was the meekest person on the face of the earth, but you would not call Moses weak. What does that mean? God, when the children of Israel acted up, he went to God. When they tried to replace him, he went to God. When his sister turned on him, they went to God. When his brother turned on him, when Aaron was running around butt naked around that calf, <laughs> Moses talked, chucked them, them tablets and went straight to God. Quiet, humble. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Take away two. Rise above it. You're going to have to learn to rise above it. Rise above You're going to have to rise above it. Why? Because guess what? When Obama was in office, he was the first black president. Why are you talking about? Because this is relevant to who you are. I remember some lady, some governor, she had, had a photo shoot from Arizona. She used a photo of he, the president of the United States landing in the airport, and she used that as a chance to put her finger in his face. So she could get a, and she ain't even governor no more. Meek. He, could, he had to be the first, because, boy, if one of us was the first, huh? <laughs> He's twitching now, like, I know you did, your elderly behind, I know you didn't. Trying to, trying, to, trying to come up on me, trying to use a photo op to try to be tough, to try to put me back in my place. You're going to have to out, you're going to have to outclass and rise above it. Me and my first lady, we were pretty much attacked and doing a funeral, what, in February, weren't we? Huh? We Obama day behind. Look, we did it like this. <laughs> they wanted to fight in the parking lot. That, was, that felt great, huh? Wife was dressed. She had a little Michael Kors. She was looking, you know. Okay, Chuck. We then our little luxury car. See, she's standing in the gravel of the parking lot. Looking stupid. Hi. Dunked on him. Huh? Like Vince Carter did that seven footer. Y'all two none know who that is. All on top. But guess what now? I'm, I'm, I got the phone. But guess what now? Guess what? God expects us. So he got the glory out of it. What it showed in that point is, man, this guy is pastor and first lady. He did not come where we are and argue with him. God has recovered them. And guess what? When that happens, our people ain't going to be able to handle it. People cannot handle it. Where you're going, people are not going to handle it. You know? And I say even racist stuff because they're used to you being in your place. Don't get fooled. I don't care what people are. Look, my, my assignment is that. I, I prayed about this about a week ago. And the Lord said, do what I told you to do. 
When God brings you black people to a place, people are going to be, they ain't a clapping for you. Like, they just correct. They don't mean that stuff. They want you to be right there so they can feel good. They can't handle it. They still mad over Obama right now. And then the guy that came in was so incompetent, it made Obama look better. He didn't have to say nothing. Like, thank, thank Trump. Man, I'm gonna look, I got bookcased by incompetence. I'm getting me in. I ain't got to do nothing. You making it easy. <laughs> that guy with Walker, Warner didn't have to do nothing. Like, thank you. You just handed me. I was like, you know, <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> this is just in my lap now. Why? <laughs> you know? Huh? When you're with wicked people, you don't have to do them. When you just, God does it. Then God will use their own appetite against them. Amen. James chapter 1, verse 2. Look at your neighbor and say, be cool. <laughs> That's a Charles Lucas Sr. saying, be cool, be cool. Be cool. It's going to work out. You got to let it play out. Your problem is you don't trust God you enough to let it play out. God never said you're not going to get hit, but he said you're not going to get knocked out. You're not going to lose. Look at your neighbor and say, stay in the ring. Sometimes, God, thank you, Holy Spirit, God has allowed you to get hit to trigger the anger and sympathy of everybody else. It looked like Dr. King and them were losing, and them idiots went and sucked dogs on them. Look at how smart they were. not the brightest people in the world anyway. But the whole time, they idiots forgot the camera's rolling, and it went all over the world. And guess where sympathy went? It went straight to Dr. King and them. <gasps> I'm shocked, and oh my God, you, you helped. <laughs> So God allowed you to, uh, to endure some discomfort to get what he needed out of them. And so when they saw that stuff, when they see the police with that phone, them, I got, you know, they, God used their appetite against them. And so you put that, that camera, that phone on them, people, man, you can't lie against the video. You're hurting yourself. Sometimes opening your mouth is a short term solution. So God understand that he might allow some temporary suffering to fix the problem once and for all. What are you talking about? The battle of Jehoshaphat that we went through. We're going to talk about how the Syrians surrounded Israel and they suffered for a few weeks and went starving. But after that, guess what? They were wealthy. God literally had their enemy come from Syria all the way and bring all their wealth with them and leave it there and run. And they ain't have to fight nobody. You're thinking that just because it's a temporary thing is going to be permanent, but you don't understand. You're not mature enough to understand how God, when God gets quiet, you should get quiet. Amen. When God is quiet, he's working. Yes, that's right. When we get quiet, we think we just stop. Because we, we, work, we work loud. God don't work loud. God like to get quiet and then spring it on like, Ooh. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I went to court, boy, them people that put me in court, they were like, Ugh. we thought we had, like, well, I thought you had me too. <laughs> God, like, surprised, then he pulled a curtain back, like, ta da! That's what I've been working on. <laughs> huh? It says here, my brother, encounter all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Look at your name and say, trust God. You have to trust God in this season. Trust God. What do you need to be working on? Work on your relationship with Christ. Work on to make sure Dr. King wrote that letter from the Birmingham jail. He says, guess what? He first thing he said, I did an internal examination first. Study yourself. Look at your study. Make sure you're not in sin. Make sure that you, your motives are pure. Make sure you're in line with God. Make sure you repent. Make sure it's not happening because of the sin that you committed. And guess what? If it does, you can go to God and God will still bail you out because he loves you. I ain't saying get you out of the situation now. You, have a, you got a child and you ain't married, guess what? <laughs> there ain't no, you know, hey, he'll make it. He'll make He'll anoint you to be a father. He'll anoint you to do this stuff right there. But if you got one and you're not married, guess what now? He ain't going to just, <laughs> she ain't going to go away. And that's not a problem. It's a blessing. 
And what God will do is give you grace to handle it. Some problems he's not going to bail you out of, but he'll give you grace, and it won't, it won't leave the scars. Amen? Take away three. Take away three. Amen? We're almost there. Guess what? Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. God expects us to be meek. Keep your eyes on Jesus. What does that mean? As the example of Jesus Christ. Look at your name and say, if Jesus did it, I can do it. He <laughs> can't be like, okay, man, you ain't Jesus. But when we have the Holy Spirit, and I'm not saying perfect, but that's our goal. That's our aspiration. That's, that's our image. That's where we're going. That's where we're driving. We are, our, our windshield is where view is seeing. Our windshield points towards our destination. Jesus is our destination. His character, he is our model. He is the one we imitate. First Peter chapter 20, I mean, first Peter chapter 2, 20 through 22. And Peter's tough to read, I'm telling you now. It's tough in your flesh to read Peter. Hmm? Sometimes I try to avoid Peter, but guess what? It's real, it's good. Amen? Yeah. Peter is tough. Peter's tough on the flesh. First Peter chapter 2, verse 20 says this. And write it down. First Peter chapter 2, verse 20 says this, 20-22, it says, if you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do good and suffer for it, this is commendable thing before God. And so what, God, shut that up, God, ha thank you, Holy Spirit. What happens now is when you do right to people who are doing you wrong, it triggers God's judgment on them. You're trying to fight your battle, but God wants to, God wants the privilege of revenge. Feels good to him too, right? So that's his. He says, vengeance is mine, that's not yours. And so you're drinking from his, the king's cup. That's his right to do it, not you. It's almost like in the days when you had a king, right? Like King David or Solomon, and, 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 and you have a dispute before your neighbors, you go handle it instead of taking it to the king. What's going to happen to you? If the king finds out that you took it in your hands, it's going to offend the king. You didn't do that back then in the days of David and Solomon when people did you wrong. And you, well, I didn't, I, I, you know what? I did it myself, king. I handled it myself. Oh, really? Okay. Well, I'm going to handle this myself. Right? The king had reserved the right to make the judgments. That's his privilege. When you're in the kingdom, that's the king's privilege to make the right, to, 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 to make the judgments, like, not you, even if it's obvious. For, for, for to this you have been called because Christ has suffered for you, leaving you in it, what, an example, leaving you what, an example. Christ is your example so that you should what, follow his steps. Jesus suffered, and then he said, that is an example for you so that you can what follow. Not watch, but follow. <laughs> we like to watch Jesus, but we don't want to follow that brother. Look. <laughs> we like to watch him, <laughs> but we don't want to follow. <laughs> Come on, get in the car. No, I'm cool. I'm cool, man. You know? <laughs> you'll, watch, you'll watch him, though. Amen. <laughs> Some of us are watchers of Christ and not followers of Christ. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his what mouth. And Peter says, follow him. Hmm? And the world tells us to follow everybody but Christ. Why? Because Christ is not practical in this world. It's not practical to do that. And guess what I'm telling you now? If you're going to succeed in corporate America, if you're going to succeed in your marriage, if you're going to succeed in raising kids, if you're going to succeed in that business venture God gave you, if you're going to succeed in ministry, guess what? There's going to sometimes you're going to have to be meek. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I see almost Holy Spirit showing me that some people who come at you that you're trying to fight them and they're running at you full speed. And sometimes all you got to do is kind of just get out the way and then they run right into the ditch. But you're trying to fight them and what you're doing is saving them from their own judgment. Hmm? I lived in Korea for a while and they had this martial arts term called Taekwondo. And Taekwondo, what it did is use their, their person's momentum against them. 
So they's coming at you a certain way, so you just let them come and lean, and then so you trip them as they're going or something. You know, you're using their force against them. Amen. God, what the enemy meant for evil, God will turn for good. The Bible says when the enemy digs a hole, baby, guess what? Now they fall into it themselves. You heard that saying about, about get them enough rope to what? Hang themselves. That's a strategy too. Meekness is a strategy. You know that meekness is a strategy? That's a strategy. But we don't give God time to work. We can't handle pressure. We can't handle being disrespected. As soon as somebody disrespects, I'm going to check them right there. And you got to understand sometimes your success is a vindication. They'll look stupid on their own. You can't go back and forth. The Bible says argue not with a what? Fool. You can't do that. Even now, I always go to about like, why are you talking about politics? Why? Because guess what? Now, I told you with Daniel, we talked about Daniel, Shadrach, and Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Guess what? All of that was political maneuvering. Politics got Daniel in the lion's den, but God used it. Politicians put Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in that same place. People don't want to talk about that because they don't want people free. And they know if you go and believe God for certain, or send certain people to office, or you go and believe God for certain things, what, what politics does, God, the devil wants his people there so that with one person he can influence and mess up many lives. So he don't want you, he wants you to have a gun, but no voter registration card. He wants you to have an EBT card, but no voter registration card. He wants you to have a Bible, but no voter registration card. That ain't important. Well, why did God put Daniel there? Why did God put Moses by the king? Why did God put Joseph as a governor? Those were politicians. Shadrach, Meshach, and Mendel, we talked about last week, they were politicians. They were, they were princes and presidents of Babylon. They weren't just brothers on the street going to quick, quick trip. No. Esther was a politician. She was a queen. She ruled a nation. God put them in office. Why? To help and to preserve God's people. And so what happened now? The devil putting his people there. And they ain't going there for no ideas other than, okay, I got to stop black people. I got to go do it, you know. You got one in what Florida doing it now. He, all he campaigning on is, is erasing black history. Doing it, huh? Why are you talking about this? Because this, this is the flock God assigned me to. I don't care. But guess what you got to do through all of that stuff? Guess what? My, my, what I'm trying to say, Rick, as we go to the last two, is, is this right here. Is, is what the Holy Spirit is trying to tell me, tell you, is this, you don't have to worry about it. Because all that stuff has happened for centuries, and none of it worked. It's time now. God has proven himself for century and generation now. It's time for you to just, you know, you can just rest. Go vote, but rest. You ain't got to worry about it. You got <laughs> Huh? You don't have to worry about that. Amen? Amen? When you endure it, there's a certain anointing in that. There's a certain honor in doing it God's way. There, when everybody's cutting up, acting dysfunctional, talking about segregation today, tomorrow, for all, all that else, none of that stuff works. Before I came in here, I was reading the book of Exodus a little bit, and it talked about how, how Pharaoh had put the children of Israel in slavery. But what it did is it triggered God on Pharaoh. I suffered for 19 years in abusive and another 20 something years under my father. More than half my life has been that. I'm 53 years old. And 40 of those years have been under subjugated down their slavery. 
I know what it's like to have to be meek. I've just taught that. To survive. But guess what? In every last one of them, God vindicated. God did it in his time. I'm able to speak now with some measure of humility, I believe. Guess what? Because of that stuff. When other people might struggle with that, I understand it. Amen. Some, look at your neighbor and say, wait it out. We're almost there. Sometimes you got to wait things out. Because God wants the big picture. He wants the story to be sweeter. What he wants, he wants your story to inspire other people. But you got to let God write the good, the bad, the ugly, and then get it pretty first. All you want is success. Five ways to do this. Ten steps to do this. And nobody, that's why ain't nobody going to buy the book. But guess what? When you went through all of these things right here and then God blesses you in the last chapter, that's what makes Rocky. That's what makes Color Purple. That's why we like those movies. That's why we love Jesus. It, 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 even non-Christians know who Job is. Why? Because he suffered. And then the last few chapters, God brought him out. God, you are God needs people to read your story so that your evangelistic pull is stronger. But we don't want to suffer for Christ. Especially if you don't want nobody to do us wrong for Christ. Dr. King has been dead since what? April 15th, 1969. Five years after Malcolm. And guess what? We shall over. Why are we still singing that? Why? Because he suffered. Don't lie. Like Half the people in America don't know the national anthem, but they know we shall overcome. I told you before, the people across the world, when they want freedom, they don't be quoting no George Washington, no national. What do they quote? They quote, we, they quote Jesus and they quote Dr. King and we shall get the words of the Negro. So it don't mean much to the high and lofty. But it means everything to the poor, the dark, the disenfranchised, the one in the gutter sings that when they want to be treated right. They come up to your people. We talked about before how and I went to uh, not, we're almost there in East Germany and Berlin, how we had the young theologian that was killed in Nazi Germany with what he had in his pocket. Well, it intrigue you. He had a book by a black man, an African-American called Adam Clayton Powell, Sr., Adam Clayton Powell Sr. was his mentor. All the way in Berlin, a man fighting Nazi Germany was killed and that was in his back pocket. Your story matters. You, you're thinking just for yourself. But God's thinking generations and nations that don't even know you, don't even look like you. It's going to give you victories and hand you stuff when you handle it God's way. And guess what? They ain't even gonna, they're ain't thinking about you being great, but they're thinking about what they're thinking about. If God did it for him, he'll do it for him. Yeah. If God did it for these people that everybody talking about, let them talk about you. All they're doing is evangelizing you. They think they hurt you. <laughs> they're affirmative action. They hurting you. <laughs> Let him do it. All he's going to do is he's going to make bro, Michael, Jack, Michael Jordan, and that's Michael Jordan going to go to Winston Salem State. That's all he's going to do. And they college money going to go up four times because the tuition go because the football ain't going to be there. Amen. Meek people know their value. They don't have to argue. I take my towns to South Beach. That's what I do. I, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. What's this have to do with the word? This is the word of God because God, guess God's word wants to be applied to your practical life, everyday life. Right. Dr. King used the word of God to say, this is how I'm going to handle it. And it didn't seem to work then, but generations later, every time they play that video, people get embarrassed. <laughs> you ain't got arguing, just play the video. Well, <laughs> is that you? Well, you know, that was a long time ago. <laughs> that, take, that take the heat all the way out the argument, don't it? Yes, it does. Huh? <laughs> huh? Roll the, roll the tape, James. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, well. My grandfather was, you know, at the last part of his life, he, you know, he knew Jesus. That's all, so this, you know, huh? But it shut him right up. That picket line get thin, thinner then. Well, that was January 6th, and they play that video, they're like, well, you know, uh, and I see it was there. That was, <laughs> it wasn't me. It wasn't, you know. Huh? 
One cat was one cat was there and it wasn't even his wife he was with. <laughs> he was on a date. <laughs> huh? Yeah, so you ain't got to say nothing. God fights the way you you rather for God to fight. God fight a whole lot better than you do. Take away four. Stay prayed up. That's what the Holy Spirit, because if you don't, guess what? It's going to trigger your flesh. Hmm? You get to tell the people off of your job, and God said, no, I'm trying to make you manage. I'm going to get rid of them. Because they, they telling, you think they telling just you off. And you don't understand, that's a, that person has been an HR problem for, they've been aching to get rid of that fool. Amen? Stay prayed up. First Thessalonians is 5, 17. I got two minutes. So First Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verse 17 says, well, pray without ceasing. Stay prayed up. Stay prayed. You need you cannot go in. You, if you're going to be successful in this world, you got to stay prayed up because the devil doesn't want it to happen. Amen. And he, he can't stop God. So he got to get you out of uh, what we talked about in the military. We have a thing called formation. And we can't break formation. We march and we stand in attention and we do this and we march and say, so you can't break formation. The devil wants you to break formation. Amen. Last takeaway here. It takes the help of the Holy Spirit to handle situations with meekness. You're trying to handle with self-discipline. You want and God. Look, I told you before, what happened is, 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 is you be, I'm meek. I'm so gentle and meek. You see how I handled that and I turned the other cheek. Now all of a sudden you in Publix now and Clarence come in and he owe you child support from 1985. He come in with his 23-year-old girlfriend, huh? And she got a diamond bigger than your house. Huh? You gonna cut a conniption fit. I know you didn't come up here. I'm going to snatch that wig right off your head. I'm a, <laughs> you know how we get in Atlanta, huh? I, 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 you know, huh? Roll our eyes. We got to say something because we ain't over it. <laughs> huh? I wish she would come down. She better not say that to me. Watch her come up here right now. Uh -huh. Toes don't even fit them shoes right there. Huh? huh? Believe he did that. Huh? <laughs> He's going to come and try to act. And Clarence going to come and try to shake your hand to be the bigger person. Huh? Like, oh, I know he didn't. Huh? Huh? You will cut up. The devil know your butt. Amen? Galatians 5.22. We're going to end. This ends the series right here. Amen? So we need God. We need God. Help with this every day. You can't handle this on your own. You have to pray for help. At the end, we're going to pray for God's help to do this. Amen. Because we talked about a couple weeks where offense is going to come, but war unto it come. When unto whom it comes, uh, Jesus says. But guess what? We got to let God handle that. Let God handle Clarence. You know? You going tearing Publix up? No. <laughs> you know? Hmm. Right? On social media, telling all the business. Now look at her. He ain't even looking. Hmm. Believe that. She don't love him. Her eyes ain't even really brown like that. <laughs> Amen. But the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. What? Meekness. All capital right there. Look. Temperance. Against such there is no law. That's it for meekness. Guess what? But you handle it. It's not weak. It's trusting God to fight your battles. And remember again. The devil will try to ensnare you with your own words. You see, remember how when President Obama was there, how he, how he, before he talked, he got, he ain't Jesus now. I'm just saying, you know, um, what he would do is before he would get, he would, they ask a question, he'd pause for about a half a second or read from that teleprompter. Why? Because the world don't want you where you are. I have to watch my words because they, they trying to find stuff. And these are folks that go to church with the Bible. Hmm? You got to watch that. If you don't get anything, get that point of watch your mouth, watch your words, and let God handle it. He got it. You got to have confidence that God loves you. And the reason why you don't, because you don't believe God loves you enough to defend you. Look at your name and say, wait for it. Wait for because it. God loves you. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's not time to be playing with that. You've been trying to handle your own salvation yourself. 
listening to YouTube prophets and getting woke and got talking about the frequencies and all kind of other stuff like that. And guess what now? What, what, the Bible says Jesus is the same today, yesterday, forevermore. He don't change. His version of time is not the same as yours. You're thinking it's evolved, but God is time. So he set the standard here. He don't have to change it with the times because he is time. You kind of catch up with him. And so what you're doing, you're trying all this stuff only to find out later in life that the original was the, re the, real, the right thing. Solomon said, after all of this stuff I've got, he said, it's all vanity. He found at the end of his life that guess what? My relation, I had everything when I first started. Don't be a fool. And when you transition from this life to the next, after chasing everything else, after chasing Buddha, after chasing Wotans, after chasing all this, other, after trying to mix Christianity with other stuff, cultural stuff, that you find out that Jesus was enough the whole time. That he wasn't in style, but he was right. We need to stop following trends and follow Jesus. Amen. And he goes in style or out of style. In style is always going to change. Huh? This new movement, this is all it is, is a 60s hippies movie. There was in India before. All of that stuff you see with the tattoos and the piercings, that stuff is coming from here, from there. That's the same stuff they didn't see. That's the same metaphysical stuff. That ain't new. That's the stuff that was caused the flood. The energies. The free, that stuff been here. And God hated it then. This ain't new discoveries. They got books thousand years old with the same stuff that never worked. The same demons, the same fallen angels. The devil don't use this. He uses different. In a new way, what it does is trying to replace God, and it makes you, it try to make you God. You're the one of your, you're the captain of your soul. No, you ain't. That's why, the, that's why you shipwrecked. <laughs> <laughs> trying to stare at yourself. Amen. We romanticize what we call in the modern world secular, secular humanism. Soul power. Intellectual power over this because we can't stand not being in control or not having the answers or looking stupid or being helpless. Amen. There's an old song out there, baby, called Safe in His Arms. Repeat after me Heavenly Father, I come to you as a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. And I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my life and make me a new person. And fill me with the Holy Spirit. And I, and I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Look, if you made that good, the Bible says angels are rejoicing over that. And guess what? We're not just preparing you for eternal life. It's a better life. God wants to fight your battle. You know, and I had been almost tricked. The, the, the trick of the new generation is say, don't expect nothing from God because God, God never told you he was going to do. Yeah, he did. He promised you that you're his God, that he's your God and, he's, and, and you're his people. Things do go better with God. I did not say there's not going to be an attack, but guess what? You overcome because if God be for you, who can be against you? All hearts and minds are clear. May the Lord bless you and keep you, Lord God. Give them strength to be meek, Lord God. Reward them for it, Lord God. Ask in Jesus' name, amen. And this is your pastor, senior pastor, promise and ministry saying what? Keep moving. <laughs>